and old as the hills. And the reason, obviously, that he's playing this, he uh, guards the key E4 square, and because he wants to get in his pawn push to have these two pawns together and cover all these four squares. Okay, so White comes out and he uses development, and he plays knight f3, and he, at the same time, he's getting that square. Okay. Now, there's different moves here. Knight c6, uh, e6, uh, uh, g6, but we're going to play the dragon, which is one of the most exciting lines in all of chess. And what we're going to do, we're not going to go too deep in the analysis, but we're going to give uh, some memorable ideas so that you can play it. Uh, because you'll understand instead of just uh, getting into a deep analysis and all that kind of stuff. So, e6. What he, what he wants to do, he eventually wants to play knight f6, and he doesn't want this uh, pawn to harass his knight. So he's playing e6, plus he lets out the issue. Now, white continues his development. He play. plays the pawn up quickly. Why does he play the pawn up? Well, let's out the bishop. The queen is stronger uh, now than it was here. It only had one square. Now it's already has more scope, more power. And um, black will now play pawn takes pawn. But, and why is he playing pawn takes pawn? First of all, it's a side pawn for a center pawn. Side pawns, the uh, center pawn is worth more than a side pawn. So, quickly going over this, because quite a lot, I would think most of you, or a lot of you understand this part, but the ones that don't, I'm quickly over. Uh, pawn paints pawn, and another key point, he opens up the C-plot. Good players already look into the future that he's going to get his game going down that C-plot. Okay, white paints back with the pawn, I mean with the knight, and now, uh, looking at this, remember we were talking about a uh, pawn structure, material, space. Uh, who has the space right here? Uh, what? And what? Because he controls the center and the pawns more advanced than black. Yes, uh, yes. He controls, black cannot put a piece on either one of these squares. See, where white already has a piece on that square. That's why this pawn is more valuable than this pawn. But, there's something else going on here. Black has the center pawn. White only has one. Okay. So, uh, that, the more center pawns you have, usually the better. Okay. Now, black doesn't want to lose any time, any time, and he wants to develop. And he plays knight f6 to attack the pawn. And making white spawn to his drum beat. If he plays something else, like, uh, he can't play a6, and that gives all the different ideas. He can play a move like this, it's kind of uh, more of a shenanigan idea, small center, but we're not going to cover any of that. He wants to play uh, aggressively and accurately, and he's helping his king uh, castle later on. Now, white has to respond to this attack. Now, would bishop here be an okay move? Anybody else think that that's a decent move? Yeah, well, the bishop here is not, first of all, the knight's unprotected. And the bishop may not want to go there. But where is this knight going? It's going to go right to C3. So you, that's why Lazarus said, bring the knights out before the bishops. Because you haven't determined where your bishop is. Whether it's going to be here, here, or here. So, bring your knight out and guard the pawn. Okay, now, now we're going to, uh, if you play, if black plays A6, that gets him for the knight or which is a really good line. But we're looking at the dragon. No, the fearless dragon. He's going to play uh, g6 to g7, opening up, he plans on putting his bishop here and controlling that 
uh, long diagonal from A1 to A2. And then it's going to pass through. Okay. So that's the that's his idea. Now, why must develop the plan? The, does anyone have an idea of what it should be here? Maybe the, uh, what here? Okay, you say that again. Okay, F3, does somebody else have an idea? Okay, F3, it's a little premature. You want to put your bishop right here first. Okay, let's say he does. If the knight comes here, what, uh, if which is a terrible, say you can defeat your opponent, is that not a trick? Say, thank you. Look at this before and say, well, the reason I play F3, I don't want the knight. No, you want to invite him in. Okay, how? Okay, so if black plays this, what are you going to play? Check. There it is. And that's going to win probably a piece. Is it or not? So if he plays here, the check, and this is one of the pitfalls that, oh, you want to learn this from both sides, so you can play either side and just get down some of these key concepts. And this is a mistake a lot of club players make. They'll play the knight up in the bishop check. Ah! Ah, a nasty surprise. If he plays the knight here, what is uh, uh, white? Hey, okay, this takes the free knight, right? What if he plays the bishop? Takes the knight in. And it's in. Paralyzed. It's paralyzed. He moves the pieces. And then if bishop takes bishop, knight takes. You got two knights to take the bishop. So, uh, and if he plays this, this is okay too. He can just play knight takes. And he's still in the box. Because if he plays knight takes bishop, hitting the queen, he's on his queen and it's his check. So, that game's over actually after this bishop. And that's why that is punished. And that's why you bring the bishop. So that's something to remember, easy to remember, easy to recall. Okay. So we'll play the bishop here. And now we'll proceed with this. Now it could be threatened. Because if you play, what's, what's changed? Does anybody see that if it's black smooth or white, you might be able to play this now?
first move so he can win a pawn for, his, for this skirmish and 